Welcome to Forza Tesla and more. My name is Daniel and I'm very happy that you are here with us today in our channel. We will remember the advancements in technology through time and discover the foundations that support the new technological advancements that we see today. In today's chapter, I will talk about a device that changed my life and I'm pretty sure the same happened to you. This device is the computer. The first computer was called ENIAC and this was uh, invented by J. Presper Ecker and John Mautley at the University of Pennsylvania in the United States. Its construction began in 1943 and was not completed until 1946. It occupied approximately 1,800 square feet or 167 square meters and it used about 18,000 vacuum bulbs. Imagine the weight of this device. It weighed almost 50 tons. As is described in the website computerhope.com uh, and you can uh, search in the internet for this website and uh, learn more about it. This is a picture, uh, actually here, this is a picture of that computer that it was invented in 1943 and it finished in 1946. After that, there were several, several advancements in the computer power. In the year uh, 1954, uh, the brand Toshiba introduced its first computer, the TAC digital computer. After that, in 1958, the company NEC built the first computer, the NEC 1101. After that, Hewlett-Packard Hewlett HP, in the year 1966, released its first general computer, the HP 2115. From there, we will travel through time and we will go to the year 1975. In 1975, we saw the first laptop portable computer that was launched by the company IBM. This is a picture of the IBM uh, 5100 which weighed approximately 55 pounds or nearly 25 kilos. It had a screen of about five inches, almost 13 centimeters long, and a pump processor of 1.9 megahertz with only 64 kilobytes of RAM. Can you imagine that? I'm pretty sure a lot of pictures that we take today has more than that memory. The first laptop that you can see here, it, it was the first one ever portable. So at the time, it was something very, very advanced and it was something very uh, technological, uh, innovative. This was an advertising photo of the IBM 5100 taken in November of 1975 for the magazine Scientific American. From here, let's travel to time and go to many more uh, developers that happened after the release of this computer, like the Apple One in 1976, after that the Commodore in 1977, and in the IBM PC in 1981. After that, Compaq in the year 1983 released its first computer that was 100% com IBM compatible and with the name Compaq Portable. After that, the, the company Dell in 1985 introduced its first computer, the Turbo PC. The first multimedia computer was the released in 1992 and it was the Tandy Radio Shack. And it was among the first ones ever uh, utilizing the MPC standards that were developed at that time. In my particular case, and, and that's the reason for this chapter, 
uh, my first uh, computer was uh, this, the Casio PB100F personal computer. And I'm going to show you here a picture of it so that you're able to, to see uh, how this uh, device look. This device has a very, very special value for me. Not only because it was my first computer, but because it was a gift from my father's brother, my uncle Saki. He gave me this beautiful device that allowed me uh, to start my, be, my interest in developing in programming and learning more about the operations of this device when I was only 14 years old. This computer allowed me to get to know the language called BASIC for its operation and thus beginning my career in the knowledge of codes and variables for computer programming. Now, remembering what uh, we already have experienced, it comes to my mind how I learned to generate a very small program to solve algebra equations in, when I was in high school. It was without a doubt an experience that laid the foundation for my interest in technology. In the year 1982, the PB100 represented Casio's move toward the real pocket computers, something that really you could carry on uh, in your pocket. While its ancestor, the FX702P, was still called a programmable computer, the PB100 proudly carries the title of personal computing. However, the PB100 appears to have uh, been a very uh, low cost design. Its specifications are clearly inferior of those of its predecessor, the FX702P, and uh, as well as the other devices that the company Sharp developed. The limited 12 characters displayed makes basic programming and uh, debugging a very pain-taking effort. Its, its standard version is equipped with one kilobyte of RAM and this results with only 544 bytes for basic code, which is really limiting. At least with the OR-1 memory module, you can upgrade the uh, memory to uh, 1,568 bytes of user memory. So it is starts to make a little bit more sense to do basic memory that uh, subdivides this in 10 independent uh, P0P program areas. Uh, furthermore, the keyboard that you, we can see here, as you can see the keyboard on, on the uh, picture, was one of the first to provide a QWERTY style that later other um, uh, devices uh, make, make use of it too. On the other hand, this cute little machine is really small and light, so really it was a true pocket device that you could take with you. In the year 1983, Tangi uh, Radio Shack uh, also released a similar uh, device uh, under their brand, and uh, later down uh, the time, the Olympia OP544 uh, was also commercialized under their own brand. So these are two examples that you guys can see here of the same device, but branded with different um, uh, companies. This is my uh, quick report of the passage of, of this uh, uh, back in time, talking about the technology and the, the review of this. I would like to share with you a little bit of the code that uh, you can do in um, a basic. So this is a, pic this is a picture of the coding that you can enter into this little machine and do little programs um, utilizing the basic. So this was my report uh, in the passage of time and how the technology that uh, was developed back then laid the foundation for so much revolutionary technology that we saw later in the future. And this has made a big foundation for the new devices and new technology that we can see not only today, but the one that we will see in the future. In our next chapter, I will show you another device that is also uh, that was revolutionary for its time 
and it is a FM radio clock uh, that in 1983 for you to have a, a, a watch that had a radio FM on it it was very in, in, innovative something that also has a very very special value for me in my heart uh, thank you very much for watching this video and if you really like what you just saw please give the thumbs up and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel where we will be reviewing technology and how these have changed our lives receive a big cup from me and please take good care of yourselves and until next time here we wait for you here for Satesla and more thank you and have a great day